Welcome to Programming in Modern C++. We are in week 1, module 3. In the last uh, module, <coughs> we started taking a look at how to write equivalent C++ programs for simple C programs. We took examples which involved uh, IOs, uh, variable declaration, standard library, and bool and so on and observe that uh, most of the times C++ gives us more flexibility in terms of the declaration, input output as well as typing and things start getting simplified to read as well as write. So, we will continue that study in this module as well looking into the next important, the next two important uh, things you, we, all of us need to know in programming that is arrays and strings. Okay. So, this is the outline which uh, you will be there on the left always. So, let us talk about arrays and well vectors. So, first arrays. So, here is a program which uh, defines an array of length 4 that is 4 elements and of type short. So, every number is short and then it uh, assigns uh, values to different uh, array locations and prints them one after the other. Now, this is a program which is if in write in C++ it remains the same. I mean there is nothing, no difference of using you know fixed size array between C and C++ is the same. Now, let us say this fixed size array could be a large one right? and it is uh, possible that it is fixed size because we do not know what the maximum size should be. So, we just make it large. Right? So, here is one way of writing it, where we make it, uh, we use the constant size of the array right into the quote and then uh, you know add the elements uh, and so on, assign some element, add them. This is that is that is just for illustration. So, the other option is to put a manifest constant defining the size and then use that manifest constant. This is, I mean here both are C it is not, you do not need uh, C++ here, the both are C. Now, we often prefer this because, you know, if we in future need to change the size, either increase it or decrease it, then it becomes quite a, quite an exercise to dip inside the code and find out where this size has been defined, because it is not going to be as simple a program like uh, what you see here it could be couple of thousand lines that you have in the file and finding out exactly this uh, dimension, size dimension of this array has to change is a huge problem. Whereas, if we do a manifest constant, I can just simply change it here and it also gives another advantage that uh, often maybe number of different arrays may have their uh, size related. I, I, I am I'm reading two vectors and adding them in a third vector. I have three arrays and all of them must have the same maximum size. So, if I hard code, I have to do the changes in three places, I might miss that out, but if I put the manifest constant and use that, the change is only at one place and things solutions are simpler. So, this is just, just talking about you know uh, how to keep things uh, better in, in C itself and uh, So, let us say now 
we want an arbitrary size dairy because we do not know how big it should be. I mean, should I unnecessarily keep it 10,000, 100,000, how much? I have no idea. So, <coughs> the one option is to declare a size, an array large enough, which is greater than the size, all possible size that can have. And that can be hard coded as a maximum size as we have seen or declared to a manifest constant. Now, as we have learnt in uh, C that this is not often a preferred approach if you do not really know what is the going to be the size. So, what you can do you can use a dynamic allocation using malloc the C there is a C equivalent of that called mu which you will learn later on, but know that there is an equivalent of this as in malloc itself will also work in C plus plus. To, this will be helped to dynamically allocate space at the runtime. So, at the runtime you may be able to figure out that you need this much of space. So, you allocate that size tarry and proceed, but this will still not allow you to change the size while once you have allocated it. Once you have allocated it is kind of frozen. Right? So, that is that is the available approach that you have. So, with that uh, let us see what uh, how things uh, go. Okay. So, now in, uh, in C you have this manifest constant and the in C plus plus what I do is I include a new thing called vector. Vector is a library a type defined in the library not in the language, but in the library therefore, I need to include the library component vector. Then I write this where a r r is the name of the array, vector is what I want, vector is like a one dimensional consecutive locations. I want those locations to be of int type and at the time of declaration at the time of definition I want the size or the number of such ints as max. So, you can you can relate that int comes here array name is here the size is here and instead of this built in array I do this vector stuff a particular notation. So, if I do that, then once I have declared that, then I can use it exactly in the same way. There is no difference. I, I use it in the, I have not declared it with this array notation, but I can use it in the array notation. So, nothing else changes, it is just the declaration that is different and the same program works. So, max is uh, the declared size of the array max here is the declared size of the vector, there is no header included, here the vector header is required, here you declare it as you know and here you have to declare it as vector int. So, kind of you can you can see that the, the type of the array and the type of the vector maps you know syntactically in this way. Right? So, your question as to as to what great thing we have done, I mean it is the same thing, same index, same notation. Yes. To, to see the advantages, uh, we will now have to take the next example, where we actually dynamically allocate an array. So, look at the C site included uh, this to get malloc and this is what you know we have to do is we have to call malloc pass it the size, the total size in bytes. So, where count is the number of elements that I get at the runtime, size of int is the size of every location. So, I multiply them to get the total number of bytes in the array and the array actually is defined as a pointed to integer, because I could not have defined it as an array, because I did not know the size. 
but as you know due to pointer and array duality I can use this in the array notation. Coming to C++, you do the same thing. You declare, now you are not making a explicit dynamic allocation. You just declare the array. And unlike the previous time, we have not even provided a size max as we did earlier. Because if I do not provide, then it takes a default size, whatever that default size is. Now, what I can do? Once I have got this count which says how many elements I want, I can resize the array. I can resize the array. This is something which is very, very important that I can change the size. So, the default say uh, count here is 10, say suppose my default was 5, then the vector ARR will be resized to fit 10 elements. It can be resized, suppose I, I started with a default of 1000 and my value is 10. As I resize, this 1000 will be reduced to 10 size array vector and the remaining 990 elements will be released because I do not need them. Rest of the code remains the same. So, couple of advantages. One is for using malloc, you have to do the size of and it's complicated syntax, lot of things to be written. And then you have to do a kind of a bypass by taking a pointer and then interpreting it as an array. Here it is just straightforward, simple to write. Second and most important thing is you can set the size by malloc only once because this is the time that you are allocating and getting space. Whereas, here you have first got the array and then you are resizing it. Right? So, it is possible that even going forward, if you decide to have more elements or if you decide that no, I do not need that much of it, you can again resize. So, at the run time, you can change the size of the array as you need. Those who have done dynamic arrays well will also say, well, that is possible in, in C as well. I can do a realloc and, and so on. And But if you do that, yes, you can do that reallocation more or less, but then you will have to manage the entire thing of copying the original array into the reallocated array and you know manage the pointers, everything you have to do. Here nothing you need to do. You just say this is a vector and resize. So, it resizes at runtime and makes your coding much easier. So, whether it is a fixed size array, whether it is a array which is fixed size by manifest constants or whether it could be potentially a dynamically managed array size, all of that can be handled by just this vector definition, which naturally makes arrays much easier or array like things much easier in C++. So, very often, unless unless it is absolutely known that this array has uh, this much of fixed size and so on, you will be using vector to make things much easier to deal with. And mind you, the vector is as efficient as arrays are. There is hardly any overhead of using a vector over using a traditional language defined array. So, that is that is a big point to note that is a big thing to learn that I can actually do all of these in, in terms of C++ and make any program because most programs will have arrays and we can make them simpler to read, write and manage by using the vectors that are available in the standard library. Next move on to the next, uh, now move on to the next uh, type which is string, you know 
thing we all know or are heavily I'm sorry so so strings will be manipulated in C and in C++ for in C as you know we have string dot h all of you know this I'm sure and what is a C string it is an array of character array of character which is terminated by null which actually is defined to be 0. So, after 0 whatever is there will not be considered and how does it become a string? It is not a string by type, it is just an array of characters and by convention you are saying that somewhere it will have a null character and that means the end of this stream of characters as a string. So, how does it become a string? It becomes a string by the way the different functions in string dot h standard library component interprets it. So, we often do strlen to find out the length. What it does? It starts from the index 0 of this array keeps on going till it finds the null character and as many characters are crossed over is the is returned as the value of the length. Similar things are done in str uh, cpy, str uh, cat, str dupe and so on. So, so, the language does not have any support for string nor does the library has a support as a string type as such it just provides you a few functions and a convention of storing characters with a null termination which makes the whole story of string which is heavily heavily used. Now, similar thing is provided in C++ in terms of a type which is still not in the language, but in the C++ standard library. The standard library component string defines a string type, it is a type and it is a type with very convenient operators like you can have plus operator to concatenate two strings, it is kind of equivalent of str cat. You have an assignment operator to do a str copy and so on. In addition, in addition to that you can use the C standard library string dot h functions in C++ by including C string as in the std namespace right. So, this is the overall story of strings between C and C++. Okay. Now, let us go with concatenation of string that is the. So, in C you have C string dot h here you have only string not C string if I have hash include C string then I will actually include the C standard library header which is str cat, str cpy and all that I do not want that. What I want is the C++ standard library string type. So, I just include string. Right? Now, here I have initialized a an array with these characters initialized another array with these characters as just just for the purpose of illustration I have shown two ways of uh, initialization both of which are available in in C plus plus as well. And then I want to I declare an array which should be the concatenation of this hello followed by world right. So, to get there what do I do I copy the string 1 into str which overrides everything in str and make it str 1 and then I do str cat str 2 which means after str 1 remove the null terminator put the characters of str 2 with the null terminator. So, that you get the whole string very simple algorithm you all have written this you know. In C plus plus this reduces to simply saying this str 1 plus str 2 means concatenation right and then 
what you achieved in terms of str cpi and str cat is putting the values in that target array str that is simply done by another operator assignment a string is a type here so it supports plus to mean concatenation it supports assignment to mean overwriting a string and the name of the type is string so it is a huge advantage in terms of using this so if we if you compare there's a need for string dot h in c there's a need for string again mind you not c string c string is an array of characters whereas string is a data type which internally may keep a c string we will talk about that later but so far as use is concerned you can just treat it as a data type string concatenation is done with str cat need to copy into str and str must be large enough to fit the size and the user has to take care of all of that here all that you need is like addition of int you don't have to bother what is the size of str and so on str after the concatenation str is being initialized with that concatenated value so it will be initialized with a proper size everything is taken care of one line right so you can you can see you know when when you have programs where you'll have to do lot of string manipulation how easy it becomes when you deal with the string type right so that's a that's a big plus so far as uh, c++ is concerned now besides uh, this uh, uh, plus you obviously we have talked about the assignment operator which is the string copy and you can compare using less than equal to less than greater than equal to greater than and so on operators which are equivalent of str cmp in c so several of these can be done as a part of the type itself so here i mean this is this is not for kind of memorizing but uh, this is just to highlight to connect you to what's uh, uh, what are we talking about this is uh, your string dot h standard library in c so these are the different functions and on the rightmost column i have put yes to mark that these are the functions which are more commonly used and as a c c++ programmer you must be familiar with those so for example you have things like mem copy which is very common mem mo these are these are actually not exactly string operations but very useful you can copy any chunk of memory buffer and so on then you have uh, str cpy which is which you have you concatenate uh, then you have uh, comparison you have str chr finding out a character finding out a token the null macro itself which sets to zero size t which talks about uh, integer size and so on other functions are also important here but these are some of the commonly used frequently used functions which you kind of must know by use others you can look up further uh, as and when needed from the user documentation okay now we are i'm showing you the string in the c++ string library now as we'll see that uh, this is a type so it will have a constructor destructor which we'll understand over a period of time but it's just to say that uh, you can take a c string kind of string and initialize to create a string object it uh, does support assignment and it gives certain things called uh, iterators they are nothing but uh, uh, iterators are uh, nothing but ways to go over the a string so if you have a string here and uh, so these are the different locations in the string you can say that i put a marker here and i can say i can put a marker here so this is the beginning and this is the end
of a simple iterator. So, I can say that I want to iterate from begin to end which means exclude the end, but start from begin and go up to, but not including the end. Right? So, this gives you I mean it is kind of a higher level for loop you can think of. We will certainly explain this more, but these are these are common structures that you have in uh, C plus plus standard library. So, you have very varied forms of uh, these iterators on the type. You can begin go from begin to end, you can come up from reverse that is left to right, right to left, you can do it for constant uh, um, uh, arrays, you can do constant strings, you can do it for non constant strings and so on and so forth. So, there are some more of uh, what the string type has and on the rightmost column and this is something which you will typically not find in uh, regular documentation. In the rightmost column, I have tried to define map the corresponding C function in the string dot h wherever it is there. In some cases, it is there, in some cases it is not there because you can do things which are not like resize, you cannot resize a C string, but you can resize a string object. Right? So, I have tried to map give those mapping, those are for your references again not, not to memorize right away, but uh, as and when you will start using lot of strings you will you can find this, but the entire thing that I am trying to show is uh, string is a type in C plus plus which is uh, not only easy to use, very powerful and it has features which go way beyond what your typical C string in string dot h with its functions can do, but you are still free to use some of those functions if you really need to. This is continuation of that uh, same list and uh, you can do a lot of things like appending, like uh, uh, putting a character at the end, so on and so forth, lot of So, this brings us to the end of uh, this module where we have primarily focused on handling of arrays and the convenience of using vectors in C++ which is equally efficient and can be seamlessly used in the same form whether it is fixed size, whether it is small, whether it is large or whether it is dynamically runtime resized. All of these can be handled in, in the same syntax and the same structure using vectors which is not so in C, you have to keep track of the size from the static time or do a explicit complicated dynamic allocation using malloc and all that. And further we took a look at the string type or string operations in C and C++ when we saw that C++ standard library defines a string type as string component in the standard library which is very very useful and lot more compact than our C string equivalent in the string dot h. Thank you very much for your attention and we will meet in the next module.